Welcome back to Reacting to Crash Videos Part 10. In this episode, we are going to dive into five different crashes plus one bonus, which I'm gonna put at the end. Make sure you stay tuned for that one. It's kind of nuts. We're gonna look at these five different situations and see what went wrong, kind of evaluate them, and hopefully figure out what mistakes were made so that we don't duplicate them ourselves in the future. Now I have to say, whenever I film one of these episodes, I kind of sit down and I search through Facebook, I search through my emails, and I try to find recent current crashes because I feel like those are sometimes the most relevant. And I have to say, when I did some research, it seems like the past couple months, you guys out there in the paramotor world have been doing pretty good because I couldn't find any recent, at least tragic events. So keep up the good work, keep flying safe. Before we take a look at crash number one, I wanna give a big shout out to this book written by Jeff Goen that just came out. If you're in the paramotor world, you will recognize this title, The Powered Paragliding Bible, part six. This is the sixth version of the book that Jeff Goen just came out with. This book basically touches on pretty much every single topic in the paramotor world. If we look through the table of contents, you go from your first flight, kiting, weather, common sense and the law, airspace, all the way to mastering the sport, advanced ground handling, competition, risk and safety, advanced maneuvers, even our history of the paramotoring sport. So I highly recommend this book to anyone that's looking to get into the sport, even for pilots that are already in the sport, or maybe some guy that never wants to get in the sport but just needs some good material for the toilet. Cool thing as well, if you go to page 210, you will find pictures of yours truly for the unsupported section of uh, cross-country paramotor races. We just got these books in stock at tuckergot.com. They're available to ship right away. I highly recommend it. And uh, if you wanna check them out, they will be linked down below. Okay, let's get into video number one. Now this video was sent to me by John Ballard. And just a little background he gave me, this is a video of Lori. And he says, him and Lori have been flying for about two years now. They didn't know what happened in the moment until they watched the clip. So I'm gonna show you guys the clip and see if you can figure out what went wrong. So Lori's set up on what looks like a quad. It's got four wheels, not a trike. She's doing a forward inflation. Wing comes up crooked. It's way off to the right. She gets it back under control and is ready to commit on launch. But then she nearly tips over, aborts nicely, and brings everything to a controlled stop. So did you catch it? Did you see what happened? If you slow it down and go back, freeze the frame, you will see exactly what happened. As the wing went all the way off to her right, we see that one of the lines caught around the strobe she has mounted at the top of her cage. Now the big lesson to learn from this video is be careful mounting accessories pretty much anywhere on your paramotor and specifically areas that it's easy for a line to catch. On um, inflations or even in flight, if you take a collapse and there's a snag hazard, your lines can get caught and that can be bad news. I'm super duper guilty of this. When I was flying the Icarus race, if you go back and look at those videos, I had the gnarliest snag hazard strobe and looking back, it was not a smart decision at all. All right, on to video number two. This one comes from Kyle Cobble. I hope I said that right, in Plainfield, Illinois. He said he recently got a new wing, a Mac Para Paradox 20 meter. He was flying it around and uh, he got permission to fly in an airstrip. He saw some guys out watching and decided to go for a wing tip drag. So let's look at his POV first. He's flying around at this beautiful airstrip, sees these guys out on their porch, gives them a wave, and he's like, I'm gonna show these guys what's up. Let's go for a freaking wing tip drag on this nicely manicured grass. He brings it around, struggles to get it, touches and goes down. Now he also provided a secondary angle, someone was filming, so this is the outside view. You see he rolls into, try to get a tip touch. He's high, he's high, brings it down, touches, and you're not supposed to touch your whole cage, body, and face in a wingtip drag. So there's a couple good lessons here. One, don't succumb to showing off in front of people. Bad things can happen. Two, wingtip drags are inherently dangerous. Um, it may seem like one of those things that like, oh, it's a cool move, you know, it's an advanced skill, but they can go very, very wrong. 
and obviously in this case, I think he got as lucky as possible. He said that he slid, stood up, didn't damage any gear, didn't hurt himself, and actually took off right after this. Couple things to think about in a wingtip drag scenario. Normally, you don't approach the maneuver like this. What Kyle did was he was just flying straight and rolled in level and used the power to try to get his wingtip down. Generally, what you do in a wingtip drag is you start high and you give it about a 270 degree rotation at the ground to build even more energy. And right as you get close to the ground, you snap into a little more roll, probably holding about full power. And now you have all the energy that the engine's giving you, plus the energy from your dive. And that gets your angle way higher so that your body's farther away from the ground. I wouldn't approach the maneuver this way. Um, you can do it with the right wing and the right conditions and everything, but I don't think it's the safest way to do it. Another thing to think about in wingtip drags is the surface you're doing them on. I think grass like this is probably one of the best scenarios. Hay or corn or soybeans or things like that might seem inviting, but in reality, I think oftentimes what happens is when people try to do wingtip drags on anything like hay, it actually starts to grab their wing, cause more drag and suck them down. Keep in mind, this is a high risk maneuver. It's not something I recommend people go out and try. It's one of those things that, yeah, it gets you some cool points, but is it really worth it? Like. I've done a handful of them and I can say I've done it, but it's not something I want to do on a regular basis because I feel like eventually it's going to go wrong and I'm going to hurt myself. All right, let's move on to video number three. This comes from PPG guy on YouTube and this is an epic face plant. So PPG guy is flying around at a pretty beautiful site. He just launched off of a bit of a hill. He's up flying around having a grand old time and he decides to come in for a touch and go. Now you see him come in, do a kind of fast landing, hands up, full power and smack. Yard sale across the field. We've got prop shrapnel everywhere. So now he shows a slow-mo and now we can really start to see what went wrong. Doing a touch and go takes a little bit of finesse. It's not the easiest thing to do. You can see he touches down, immediately goes hands up and immediately starts to add power. And now what happens is when you're coming in for a touch and go, you flare, you get your speed down so you can land nice and safely. But if you put your hands right back up, that wing says, let's go. And it starts flying faster than you overshoots. And when it overshoots, it loses lift. Now, when all of a sudden you lose lift, all the weight of the motor's on your back. And to make it even worse, if you're already adding power to try to take off, like this guy did in the video, it starts pushing you if you're lean forward, guaranteed face plan. The right way to do a touch and go is to have better control of the wing, to not just let hands up all the way, to get that wing in the position you want it and keep it there. Don't let it overfly, slowly build up power again and get your lean back angle in, just like you're starting a takeoff again, but a little bit different. Luckily, PPG guy said he was a little bit bruised, a little scraped up, had some sore ribs. Obviously, I think he destroyed his propeller, but it was a good lesson learned, I suppose. All right, let's go on to video number four. This is an old one, 2013 from Backpack Pilot on YouTube. Now he's flying around in a pretty beautiful area. And what we're gonna see up ahead is a couple dudes, a group of dudes on dirt bikes. He kind of flies past them, gives them a wave and uh, they wave back. And he's like, once again, I'm gonna show these guys what's up. My paramotor is way cooler than their dirt bikes. So it hooks into a steep right turn. And right here, you see his wings slightly slip into a spin. That was a lot of S's. And he can't recover. He's too low. He smacks the water and comes down. And probably the most embarrassing moment we have seen in a reacting to crash videos video. Uh, what you get for showing off? Lucky it was close to water, for sure. Right? Yeah, I'm all right. No, but my iPhone's in my thing. I just destroyed it, I think. I've got to walk a couple miles to get my car. <laughs> that was stupid. Oh, I've been doing it forever. Hey? Yeah, I'm just only stupid today. I tried to fix it. Do you see me trying to fix it? The wing went squirrely on me, and I tried to actually fix it, but... 
I couldn't keep enough height. I was I hit the water with my prop and that was it. That was the end of it. Isn't it just the worst when you're trying to look cool and then you goof and now you look totally uncool? I think that's exactly what happened here. The big lesson to take is don't succumb to that pressure to show off. Luckily in this situation, the spin was very minor. It just started to spin. I think he's on some pretty much older gear. Whereas if you were flying modern gear nowadays, you might not have encountered a spin that easily. He almost recovered. If he had more altitude, I'm sure he would have. And luckily for him, the water was only like two, two and a half feet deep. So he didn't have much drowning risk. He just stood up and pulled his gear out. And uh, I don't know what happened after this, but I assume he had a bit of a walk of shame with these guys uh, on their dirt bikes and his busted prop. All right, onto video number five. This is an actually a very recent video, and this comes from Nico. I'm gonna slaughter the last name, but it's something like Albert. Aubert. So Nico is a slalom pilot, and he's, I guess, technically second best in the world. I think he placed second under Alex Mateos this year. They just got done with the big slalom competitions where these guys are flying like 14 meter free rides. 250 cc engines they're going all out super fast around pylons it's an amazing event to watch but this moment that was captured is mind-blowing i still don't understand like how this happened so nico is flying i believe on a 14 meter free ride he's going super fast hooking around pylons he is obviously an incredibly skilled world-class pilot um, and one thing we know about speed bar is when you're going full speed, you're not allowed to pull brakes. It's like telling the wing you wanna go fast and you wanna go slow, and it, it just doesn't work. And what happens is the wing collapses in a pretty major way. And that's what Nico said happened in this situation, so watch close. My mind is just blown. I've watched this video so many times and I don't understand <laughs> the physics that went on here. So he's going full speed. Apparently he touches brakes too much and causes a collapse, basically a full frontal. The wing goes from above him to basically behind him as a drag parachute. It almost scrapes the water. It slows down his forward speed and then comes back above him, recovers, and he flies away like freaking David Blaine magic trick. I still don't understand how he saved this. If it was 100% pilot skill, 100% luck, maybe 50-50, I don't know, I can't say, but it was just an incredible feat that I had to share in this video. All right, on to the bonus clip. Now, this video is a bonus clip because it's not technically a paramotor, it's a powered parachute. And I got an email from a guy named Alex from China, and he didn't really include much context on this specific video. But this is another one of those situations where my mind's just like blown, like what just happened? So we play the clip and it's a two-seater powered parachute with one guy in the front, he's taking off, and he starts to nosedive, and boom, front flip, video ends. Who knows what happened after this? I don't know. If you know, if you were there in China when this happened, please comment and let me know what happened because this is freaking nuts. The weight and balance must have been off, like his hang point must have been off. Uh, there was only one person in the front seat. Maybe if you're flying solo on this craft, you're supposed to be in the back seat. I don't know. Whatever happened, he was obviously not balanced right. Nose caught the ground freaking somersault and then who knows i hope he landed safe back on his wheels because that would have been the icing on the cake but the video cuts off there that's all the videos i have for you guys today i hope you guys enjoyed this video definitely a bunch of good lessons before i end it be sure to check out the new ppg bible linked in the description pick one up if you're you know into this sport if you don't want to end up in a reacting to crash videos video a lot of good information in there to avoid crashing. Also on tuckergot.com, we've got nice shirts like this one, nice hats like this one. Check it out, I appreciate all your guys' support. With that, I suppose I will see you guys in the next episode. Till then, peace. Zzz.